Okay, welcome back to another video. This is a milestone video on this channel, and you might be asking, why is that? Well, this is the 200th episode on this channel, 200th video I've ever released. And if you've seen my videos in the past, thanks for coming back and watching some more. And if you haven't, feel free to check out my channel and please consider subscribing that way. You don't miss anything in the future, and we just kind of learn to code together on this channel. As I learn stuff in the real world or on my own, either if it's from work or whatever, uh, I'll come on here and try to make a video of it if I think it'll help you in some way. So yeah, if that sounds cool, feel free to subscribe. Um, we're going to continue talking about classes in Python. We're going to talk specifically about inheritance. So I have what's called a super class, and then our class will inherit that class and the functionality of that class and properties and such, and add on to that class. And you might also call it uh, a parent class, but regardless, they're the same. Um, so yeah. Let's just refresh ourselves what we talked about in the last video. This is the prerequisite, I guess, for this video, how to create a class in Python. We also talk about the init method, um, how to create other methods, the self, all that good stuff. So feel free to check this video out if you haven't already. But just to refresh ourselves, we have a dog class. I gave it some properties, um, tail and ears. I set values to those. And then we also have a method called bark. It just prints out wolf. And then we also have a constructor or the init method, however you want to call it. And we set self.name, so the name property of this class equal to the name passed into this constructor. And then we just showed it off. So why don't we just run this again for fun? Uh, pi dog dot pi. Then we get Rufus because we printed out the name that we gave it when we constructed it or instantiated it. And then we also set the tail to missing and then print it out bark and then ran the bark method. Don't know why we did this because we didn't even print it to show that it worked. I think I did that in the video, but we'll get rid of this for now. Um, so yeah, that's fine and dandy. Let's talk about inheritance. So I have a class that dog is going to inherit all of its properties and methods and such. So let's show an example of that. Maybe it'll make more sense. Let's have a class and call it animal. And let's give it some properties. Um, Let's give it a type, maybe. So the type is going to be equal to mammal. And let's also create an init method. And let's say, and in this init method, we're going to obviously pass in the self because it's required. And let's think of some other things we can pass in. Uh, maybe I'll give it some kind of ID, some kind of number to identify it. And then maybe the species. And then maybe you can think of other things to add to this when you're trying it out on your own, but I'm just gonna keep it with that. And then let's say self.id is going to be equal to the ID passed in. And then self, come on, self.species is going to be equal to the species value passed into this constructor. So this is considered the super class or the parent class, and this dog will then be the subclass once we inherit this animal class. So how do we do that? Well, we just pass in animal into parentheses right after the class name. So now this dog class is going to inherit the properties and the methods of the animal class and add on to that class and its functionality like we did. We added a bark method and we also added its own constructor. So let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna keep everything like it is. So we instantiate a new dog called Rufus that we passed in and we printed out the name and let's print out something else. So instead of Rufus.name, let's do Rufus.type. And the reason we can do this is because even though there's no type property of the dog class, it inherited the animal class and there is a type property of that. So it should say mammal and let's run this just to make sure. Here we go, we get mammal down below. All right, that's great, but how do we invoke the constructor of this animal class? Because the constructor of the dog class, or the init method, it just does its own thing. It does self.name is equal to name, and then it leaves it as it is. How do we invoke this constructor as well? So in Python, they have something called super. And this is just going to be a temporary instance, I guess, of this animal class. So we can access its properties and its methods inside of the subclass. So super.init, here we can pass in an ID. 
So maybe and this constructor will also ask to pass in an ID and a species. And then when we invoke the parent class or the super class constructor, we'll pass in that ID and that species. So now when we go to instantiate dog, we need to pass in a few more things, right? We got to pass in an ID and also a species value. So if the ID, I'm just going to give it a value of one and then species, I'm going to say dog. I don't know if that's true species or not. <laughs> I think there's a more like scientific term, but we'll just keep it with dog. And now let's print out these values below. So Rufus dot ID. And then let's also print Rufus dot species just to show that we called the constructor inside of the subclass constructor. So we'll save this. I'll clear this down here and rerun this. And here we go, we get one, which is the ID, and dog, which is the species that we passed in. So once again, what this is doing, uh, it's running the dog constructor, and then it sets self.name equal to the name passed in to that constructor, and then it invokes the superclasses method, init, and passes in the ID and the species, because the superclass, in this case, is the animal class, because we inherited the animal class in the dog class. And then if we had another class for whatever reason, um, let's call this add one. I don't know why an animal class would have this, but let's just pretend it does. And we pass in a number. Let's just return number plus one or plus two, I guess. Nah, plus one, all right. And then here let's print super dot add one. And then we'll pass in one. So when it invokes this method, uh, it should return two, and then we'll print that out. And I'm just doing this just to show you, you know, you can invoke other methods. It doesn't have to be just the init method. So we'll save this and run this, and I forgot the self. There we go. Let's try this again. So now we get two, and woof, because we left this down here. Okay, so if you ever want to invoke methods or properties of the inherited class, that's when you use the super. And hopefully this all made sense. I know it's a little confusing with object-oriented programming, um, but play around on your own. Think of two scenarios. Think of a parent class that you can make, and then think of a subclass you can make that will inherit that and make a little bit more sense to you. But anyway, thanks for watching. I hope to see you in a future video, and take care.